Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Today I'm excited to talk to you about live events, uh, live events specifically where you can sell your books and how to choose them and really uh, focusing on the number one thing that I think that you should consider as you look to choose live events where you will maybe have a table or a booth where you can sell your books. Uh, but first, hi, I'm Dr. Beth Brombos of blogger to author I'm a number one best-selling author, and I'm really passionate about making it easy for bloggers and entrepreneurs to take their content, whether that's written or audio or video transcripts, and turn that content into a self-published book so that they can build authority and credibility, show that they are a thought leader in their niche, and ultimately use that book to help build their businesses. Uh, so a little bit of a story. So I did actually my first live book sales event uh, this past weekend. I know I've been a little behind. Um, it's not easy finding time to do that while uh, taking care of a toddler and working from home, but luckily I finally squeezed one in. And so this video is first and foremost kind of to share my thoughts about what happened with the event that I did and how successful it was, that sort of thing. Um, so to back up, so I was primarily looking to sell my Yoga for Runners books. And so I partnered with a local 5K. I met the organizer of the 5K at a local Chamber of Commerce event and got really excited about what he was doing. And so I helped out a little bit with, for example, their Facebook ads ads and uh, just kind of chat a little bit of marketing strategy. Uh, but then I also led a little yoga session after the 5k. And then in addition, I was there selling my books. So uh, primarily looking at a base of runners, um, but I do live in a smaller town. And so that running base is, uh, or I guess just the population base and the number of runners that I would be targeting through the 5k was relatively small, but I did get the table for free because I uh, did the volunteer work with the organization. So at least that cut down on my costs. Uh, so a little bit of extenuating circumstances. There was a storm that rolled through maybe half an hour before the 5K was about to start. So they had like a fun walk before the 5K. Uh, that got pushed back by five minutes. The five, or excuse me, 15 minutes. The 5K got pushed back by 15 minutes. And I think maybe that combined with the storms meant that there wasn't as big of a turnout uh, as there would have been. Uh, but bottom line is I sold a whopping two books. Yes, two. My husband and I were joking that it covered the cost of the tacos and drinks that we got at the food truck that was there. Um, they were delicious tacos, by the way. But um, so some lessons that I learned here, and this leads to the number one thing that I think think you should do when you're choosing a live event. Um, and so when we were looking, we counted about 75 runners there. Uh, but this was more of a, you know, as a small local 5k, a lot of people were there just to support the cause, which it helped support several of the animal rescue organizations in town. Uh, so it drew people who I think were mostly looking to have a good time, not too many serious runners. But the target market for my book is people who are more serious or they're looking to get faster or uh, looking to stay injury free with yoga, that sort of thing. But they are people... Um, and my ideal reader for my books, it, it is somebody who's at least looking to improve on their times and they're at minimum competitive with themselves, if not with other runners in their age group, for example. So my target market wasn't necessarily there or people who would be in my target market, there were maybe 15 to 20 people who would fit into that category. And the rest of them were just there to have a good time or maybe walk the course, or just help raise some money for the local charities that were benefiting from the 5K. 
So that brings me to this idea of the top thing that I think you should ask yourself when you're choosing events to go to and especially choosing events at which you should promote your book. And this is particularly true if you need to pay money to be able to have a table or sell your book. And that is, where are your people? Where are your readers? And what types of events are they going to be at? So for me, my people, again, they're gonna be slightly more competitive. They're probably going to be running longer distances or maybe slightly bigger races. And so really I've talked about this at length with my husband. We had some time sitting at the table and I think I'm going to look for some either a half marathon or a half marathon marathon that's kind of a moderately sized to test out in the fall that we could go to where, again, I'm going to get in front of more people who I think would be better fits for my book, who ultimately would be more interested in buying my book than the runners who are at this 5k. And so I hope that this um, the story of what happened with me. And again, I don't necessarily, th I, I don't think it was a boss, mostly because I can learn something from it and pass it on to all of you who are watching this, uh, which is really ultimately why I test these things out. But again, if I were to have sat down and really thought about it, um, and I, again, I was gonna do this either way, uh, but for you, and especially if, again, you're thinking about having a table, for example, at an event where you have to pay money to have that space, I really think that you should think strongly about who is going to be the most likely to buy your book or even if you're selling services that are associated with that. I am not currently taking on running coaching clients, uh, but again, if I was at a race that where people were more competitive, they'd be more likely to be coaching clients than people who are just doing it for fun. They're probably either not following a training plan or they're following a training plan that they got for free online. Um, likewise, I have a digital a program that's a digital download that has links to some videos, that sort of thing. And it, the people who are gonna be more interested in that are gonna be slightly more serious runners than somebody who runs an occasional 5K here and there. They're gonna be people who run on a consistent basis. And so I need to find those people. Those people may not necessarily be at these small local 5Ks that are primarily fundraisers. They're going to be at more competitive events and likely, again, longer races. So take a second to think about what the analogy is to your business. So I know I have a lot of followers who are in the health and wellness space. So if you get invited or if you have the opportunity to have a table at a local health fair in your area, for example. What, or I guess who's your ideal client and especially who are the people who would be interested in buying your books and are there gonna be a lot of those people there at that event? Um, and just take the time to really think critically about whether those people, again, are going to be there whether people who are at the event are even going to be interested in your services and whether that's a good overlap. And that may entail getting in touch with the people who are organizing the event or sometimes you just need to, kind of like I did reverse engineer it, get into the head of the person who again is your ideal reader or your ideal client and think through, okay, well, what types of events are they going to be pulled to going to? And again, in the example in my case is, are the people who I am trying to attract with my Yoga for Runners book, are they going to be at small local 5Ks? A few of them will be, but not too many of them. I'm going to get a much better chance of getting in front of them at slightly bigger races, longer races, ones that pull a bigger pool of slightly more competitive runners. And so in, choosing my next live event, I will be sure to take that into account. Um, and I just hope that for those of you who are considering doing these live events, which I absolutely think you should, and it's even better if you can get a chance to speak in front of people a little bit. Like I said, I was able to do um, that little post-run yoga session. It was 
maybe five to seven minutes long. It wasn't very long, uh, but it still got me in front of some people. And one of the people who did the stretch, there were like 10 or 15, and one of them came over and buy my book. So that's like a 10% conversion rate or slightly below that. That's actually a really good conversion rate. Um, so keep that in mind as well. Um, also, if you are interested in learning more about doing a live events, I can't remember the podcast episode numbers, but go check out the Blogger to Author podcast at bloggertoauthor.com slash podcast and look at the two interviews I did with Claire Marshall. She is an absolute pro at doing these live events. She's a fantasy author and so she'll go to a lot of uh, conventions that attract that sort of people and I think that she's I'm trying to remember, but she, she's been to people or to events where people who are interested in fantasy novels go to, and she's got a lot of really great insight. Uh, so be sure to go back and listen to those podcast episodes too, because they're really, really uh, informative and just fantastic. And Claire's a wonderful person too. So <laughs> listen to what she has to say. Okay. So those are my thoughts. I hope that they help you again, if you are looking to select a live event to go to, which I absolutely think you should do. I think it's really worth it to get to meet people face to face, super effective way to sell books and get in front of the right people. All right. I will see you all later. And until next time, happy writing.